Folktales of Hawaii, He Mau Kaau Hawaii, collected and translated by Mary Kavena Pukui, with Laura C.S. Green. The man who wanted to eat squid. Because of his fondness for squid, his real name was forgotten and he was called Punihe'e, squid lover. Early in the morning, he was to be seen with his fish spear and bag woven of pandanus, searching for his favorite food. He knew where the small squid hid, clinging to the rocks underwater at the foot of a cliff and where the big, long head had his home. One morning, when he returned with an extra big, long head, A neighbor came to him. Oh, squid lover, said the neighbor. Perhaps the gods of the ocean will be angry because you catch squid alone. Trouble may come to you. Nonsense. Do not talk to me of the gods. Punihe has no god to help him when he is fishing for squid, replied the fisherman. This silenced his friend. Punihe soon had a portion of the squid cut up and salted. Another portion boiling over a charcoal fire and a third hung before the door to dry. Both men departed, each to his own vegetable patch. Just before sundown, the squid fisher felt the pangs of hunger. He laid aside his digging tool and returned to his hut. Then he brought out his calabash of poi and the covered dish of salted squid. Then his eyes opened wide with horror. Upon uncovering the dish, he saw each piece of the squid row squirming toward the other, the ends joining and becoming whole tentacles. Punihe glanced at the other dish, where he had left the cooked squid. It was acting in a similar manner. The squid fisher waited to see no more. Away he ran to tell his nearest neighbor of the antics of the squid. His neighbor could scarcely believe the tale. To prove it, they went together to the squid fisher's home. A short distance from the hut, they stopped. The piece of squid drying before the door seemed to be agitated. The pieces that had been put away in the house both the cooked and the salted, appeared and joined the half-dried piece at the door. In a moment, the squid was whole again. Three of its tentacles were brown, three white, and the rest a very light brown. It climbed up on the hut, and with its tentacles hanging down over the doorway, nodded its head toward the terrified fisherman. The squid fisher could bear no more. He fled to the home of the friend who had warned him that morning, and never again was he seen with his fish spear, When he went to the beach, he carried a fish pole or net. And to this day in Hawaii, a dried squid will squirm when it is placed over hot coals. Mm -hmm. 